Hi there, this is Tim with an Elite Dangerous video and in this video I'm going to run through what's currently in the 1.2 beta. Um, this is uh, openly known as the uh, Wings update. It brings in uh, multiplayer functionality that um, basically allows you to form a wing with another player and um, obviously uh, share, share bounties, share um, combat bonds um, and uh, also, you know, just basically makes it a true multiplayer game which um, in many aspects it actually wasn't before. Now um, I'm actually going to go to the wings functionality last in this video. Uh, before that I'm going to run through some of the other features that I've basically pulled out of the um, release notes and feel like they're worthy of mention and obviously showing you. Um, the first things are that they've added two new ships. Those are the uh, Ferdelance and the Vulture. Um, I'm going to show you the, the uh, Ferdelance first, then obviously the Vulture. Okay, so while I start to take you through the Ferdelance here, you'll notice that it says Vulture at 8 minutes 36 at the bottom of the screen. That's the time that you would need to skip to to see the next ship. And I've done that with each feature throughout the video. You can skip forward to the next feature that I'm actually profiling. Um, feel free to do that, obviously. Um, I'm not actually going to talk a lot about what you're seeing with the Vulture and the uh, the uh, Ferdelay. Um I'm basically going to show it to you. You can pause on any of the stats, read whatever you want to read. Um, but because Frontier also do a really good job with the sounds, I also want you to be able to hear it. So that's why I'm not going to talk too much. Um, and uh, they've done a very good job with both of these ships. They both sound distinctly different. Um, so I'm basically going to shut up now until after the Vulture section. Um, enjoy this next, this next few minutes.
Booking request granted. disengaged. Engines engaged. Gear retracted.
Docking request granted. successful. Engines disengaged. Something else that they've done which is quite nice is that they've actually renamed uh, the WCM Transfer Orbital which is orbiting the planet uh, Vulcan, uh, Vulcan to uh, Leonard Nimoy Station. Um, this is in reference, obviously, to the actor who played Spock on Star Trek that uh, recently passed away. They've changed it so that you can now see docked players. Um, what this means is that basically on your, on your scanner now you'll see a, a target blip for players that aren't actually um, flying their ship, they're actually docked. This is useful because I always found with previous Elite games that the way that I would um, usually kill something is that I would find out where it was and then I would basically camp out outside that station and uh, wait for them to, to undock um, and I think a lot of people that are bounty hunting will obviously use this to their advantage now they'll um, they'll find their target um, in a system track them down to a station and then um, they'll basically wait for them to undock and now this means that um, that pirates criminals have to be very very aware of their surroundings who's outside the station um, and it makes their job a little bit more dangerous, which is, you know, seems pretty realistic to me. They've added functionality at starports with security offices for the player to hand over marked cargo. Um, I assume this is in some situations where you couldn't sell it or um, didn't want to get a uh, criminal record, perhaps. They've added a flyable debug camera with a limited range. Um, you can basically see it here. I'm just outside the uh, Lagoon Nebula and you can see it flying around my Cobra here um, Kind of the distance that you can get and uh, I think it's pretty good I don't think it's going to be any gaming advantage whatsoever, but it's going to be pretty nice for the um, Kind of the selfies of your ship and things like that and unobstructed screenshots. They've increased the distance that the system map can be zoomed out. This is quite useful because previously you would have to do kind of planet hopping to get the actual screen to move. Now you can just zoom out a little bit further and directly select the uh, planetary body that you wanted to. Useful for extraction sites is the changes that they've made to the UI that you can see at the bottom left uh, detailing the selected target. You can see whether that target is in a wing or not and this is useful because if you're, if, if you're a pirate and you're going to attack someone who's clean perhaps uh, you know whether they have backup or not. Um, and then obviously if you're a bounty hunter you can decide whether that pirate is a single target or um, is, is actually going to have friends. 
They've done a uh, balance pass on extraction sites, that's uh, the resource extraction sites, um, giving them a better variety. And I've, ju I've just done a few quick tests and I find that this is actually working and it's working really well. If you're a bounty hunter in extraction sites, they're now a lot more interesting again and uh, a little bit more of a challenge too. When identified signal sources are now a little bit more varied and actually have different signal strengths, you still have unidentified signals, but here you can see this is a weak signal st strength, and um, it looks like this is just some canisters that have been uh, dumped out in deep space. Um, and then obviously if you have a stronger signal, that can be something a little bit more interesting and uh, possibly more challenging. Um, so that's actually pretty good, you kind of know what you're going in for unless you go for an unidentified one. They've done a pass on the repair costs. Um, this basically might help me to be able to use the ASP again. Um, I'd basically shied away from using the ASP uh, because of the repair costs. Um, it just cost way too much to fix just a few percent worth of damage and um, it's a nice ship other than that, so maybe now that they've fixed this it might actually become my ship of choice again. There is now, when you do damage uh, modules, you can actually reboot your system. Um, what this does is it takes um, percents from modules that are less damaged to repair something which is completely damaged. So basically if you're stuck in the middle of deep space like this and your thrusters reach 0%, you can't move, you're effectively dead in the water. Well now it can effect, uh, eff, 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 effectively cannibalize um, working modules and take a few percent from them, give you just a percent or two that you need to get your thrusters back working and obviously then you'll be able to um, use that percent to get back to a station and obviously fully repair your ship. Um, I think this is a great addition, it's a great game dynamic really, um, and obviously people will have to use the self-destruct option a lot less. Uh, with the shields recharging here, I found it is exactly the same rate of recharge as just disabling shields and re-enabling shields on the right hand menu, so there's no issue there either. They've added hull reinforcement packages. Um, I haven't been able to test fully how much of a difference these make, but that might be interesting. And they've actually changed it so that the NPCs uh, use the right side of the um, docking slot now. Uh, basically, you should be going on, on the green side because that's what they're doing now. Um, so basically, it should be a lot easier to get in and out of the stations. Now communications and wings, this is massive, absolutely massive, and it works wonderfully. I cannot express enough how happy I am with this feature. You can see here I'm going to invite this guy to my wing. And just fast forward in time a little bit here to when he accepts and he'll switch to blue. And there we go, he's now blue, and I can see his shield information and his hull information up at the top of the screen. Now, there's a lot of options now on this communications menu that you can see for yourself. Um, I'm very, very happy with them, and uh, I like how everything works. Um, what I'm going to do towards the end of this video here is just leave you with the raw audio. You're going to hear the people that are in my wing, and um, in certain circumstances you're going to hear what I said to them as well. Um, and basically, I really like everything that you're going to see and hear here, so I'm going to just leave it in its raw um, form and um, just let you kind of play it through. You can hear um, the features being talked about, you can see the features, and I just think that's the best way to do it. Okay, thanks, enjoy. I'm saying that. Drive there we go. I'm saying that. There was a, I was after a wanted and about every other MPT on my Three, radar, so they're trying two, to attack me. One, engage. Ah, I see. 
go to that and see what it says on mine there. So this section here, I've jumped out of super cruise into normal speed and I'm setting a beacon for, for the person who's in my wing. This is a completely random section of space and he manages to find me. Oh, hang on, there we are. No, I've got you, I've got you, I've got you, blue. That's got to be you. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I was planning on the same. I was going to get a, a Cobra as a second ship and then go out down to the nav beacons. And because I'm being put absolutely on the. Um, oh, here we are. To me, alert. Wing interdiction detection. Yeah, I got interdicted by someone. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> ah, fuck it, right. Okay, where are we? There you are. Oh yeah, there is a non-player though. Yeah, it's um... An ASP. Landing bay 20, lovely. Docking request gone. That's a nice one. Oh, and Dead 2 have just come in behind you as well by looking at it. <laughs> I think what they wanted to see is whether or not I was going to make it. Take it okay. And I find it uh, so far it's been pretty clear. Yeah, it sounds very clear. I actually think that they've added some some noise to it on purpose. Yeah, I agree. The little. Uh Staticky radio effect. I, I don't mind it at all, though. Yeah, I, th I think it actually adds a lot to it. It's uh, <laughs> this is very cool. I, uh, I tested it out in the conflict zone with the capital ship last night with a couple of guys, and even with three or four people talking, it uh, it didn't clip over each other or anything like that. This is yeah, this is really great. I've um, I'm very impressed. <laughs> And uh, like it's giving me options now with with you in the wing of being able to um, basically l like nav lock to you and stuff like that. It's they've done a really good job on this. I I've only spent uh, uh, I guess maybe two two and a half hours on it, and I've yet to really find a complaint about the the whole wing's interface or anything. It's uh, it, it's been impressive so far. It's 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 even telling me the the human players that are in local and um, to me to be able to message them and stuff. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. <laughs> I don't know if you've tried the. Uh the nav lock yet, but uh, that's pretty nice as well. It, it automatically throws you into super cruise and drops you out if one of your wingmates, uh, if the wingmate you have targeted drops out. 